a new way of thinking about this is based on um, integral equations. So it's a nice method. Of, it's less complicated than it seems, and it leads to uh, some expressions for the scattering amplitude. We'll find another formula for this quantity, f of k of theta, when we cannot calculate it with phase shifts. Um, but phase shifts is very powerful if your problem has spherical symmetry. It's, uh, it's probably the first thing you try, because there's nothing to prevent you from finding a solution in that case. OK, so um, integral equations. So integral scattering equation. OK. Integral scattering equation. So what are we solving? We're solving minus h squared over 2m Laplacian plus v of r, a potential that is not necessarily spherical, equals or acts on a psi of r to give you h squared k squared over 2m psi of r. So it's an equation for eigenstates, the Schrodinger equation. It's, it's good. It's uh, nice. And this is what we've been solving. We've been solving it for some particular cases. The case of physical interest for us was when there was a plane wave coming in from infinity and a spherical wave going out at infinity. Now, at this moment, it's probably convenient to clean up uh, the units from this equation a little. So I'll use a notation in which v of r is equal to h squared um, over 2m um, u of r. U still reminds you of a potential, I think, and it's a good thing. It's a definition of U of R. It's a definition. And in that way, I can get rid of the H bars in the Schrodinger equation. And what do we get? We get minus um, Laplacian plus U of R acting on psi of r is equal to k squared acting on psi of r. OK, that looks nice. So it probably is nicer if you put it in a way that the left-hand side it's kind of a nice, simple operator. And the right-hand side involves a potential. So I'll move it along so that uh, I can pass the nabla squared to the right, but then make that the left-hand side. So this will be Laplacian squared plus k squared on psi of r is equal to u of r psi of r. OK, so we've written, we've, we've done nothing so far, except put the equation in a way that stimulates our thinking. Uh, we kind of think of the right-hand side as a source, and the left-hand side as kind of the equation you want to solve. Uh, sometimes. You have an equation like that, and you can get a zero here. Well, that's when the potential is zero. But sometimes there's a bit of potential, so the solution feeds back into this. Whenever you have an equation of this form, some nice operator, so this we call nice operator, acting on 
psi, giving you something that depends on psi that maybe is not that nice or not that simple, we can try to solve this using uh, a Green's function. That's what Green's functions are good for. So let's try to use a Green's function. So what is a Green's function? It is basically a way of understanding what this operator is. So nice operator must have a Green's function. So what is your Green's function here? It's called G. And we'll say it depends on R minus R prime. R prime is an arbitrary point so far. But here is what it does. It's, it's basically a solution You want this Green's function to be almost zero, except that not quite equal to zero. You want it to be equal uh, to a delta function. So so that's the definition of the Green's function. Is that thing, which is the solution of a similar equation where you have the nice operator acting on the Green's function being just a delta function. It's almost saying that the Green's function is the thing that solves that equation with zero on the right-hand side, except that it's not really zero. It's a source in the right-hand side. It's a delta function at this point. So uh, you would say maybe OK, I don't know. The, why would I care about this equation? You care for two reasons. The first reason is that this equation is easier to solve than this one. Doesn't involve the potential, which is complicated. It just involves a delta function. So we can have this g and solve it once because it doesn't involve the potential. And then the great thing about this equation is that it allows you to write a solution for the top equation without having to do any work anymore. Once you have the Green's function, you're done. So let's assume you have the Green's function. How would you write a solution for this equation? So the idea is superposition, basically. And uh, we'll do it uh, using that. So our aim is to use this Green's function, if we had it, to write a solution for this equation. So here is the claim. You write psi of x is going to be given by a beginning one, psi 0 of x. That is going to be a funny one. This one solves Laplacian plus k squared on psi 0 of x, or r, is equal to 0. So whenever you have an equation of this form, you can add any a solution, anything that is killed by this can be added to whatever solution you have. So uh, let's assume that we have a solution of this form, psi 0 um, of this form. Now, here I'll add one more thing. The important part is going to be an integral over r prime. Here is the superposition. I'm going to think of this potential, u of r, as kind of existing at every point r prime. So I'm going to write the solution as a superposition that involves the Green's function. So this will be g 
of r minus r prime times u of r prime times psi of r prime. I claim that this is equivalent to this uh, equation that we have, that this psi provides uh, more than equivalent, I think the precise way to say, this provides a solution of this equation, the way I've written. So let's try it. Suppose I calculate Laplacian plus k squared on psi of x here. OK, the first term, it's already 0. So Laplacian plus k squared on psi 0 is already 0. And then I come here and I say, OK, I'm a Laplacian. I care about r because I'm a Laplacian. I don't care about r prime. So I come in here and I ignore r prime, ignore r prime. I cannot ignore uh, this thing. So we have plus integral dr prime Laplacian plus k squared acting on g of r minus r prime times u of r prime psi of r prime. And now, because the Green's function was designed to give you a delta of r minus r prime, this is an integral that can be done, the integral over r prime, and just sets the rest of the integrand at the point r. Because you integrate over r prime, and this delta function fires when r, r prime is equal to r. So this gives me u of r psi of r. And that is the equation I wanted to solve, the equation that we have here. So we have turned the problem. This cannot be called the solution because we have not solved it. Uh, we have turned the problem into a different kind of problem. We, it might even seem that we've made the problem worse by turning this into an integral equation. There's no derivatives here, but uh, the function that you're looking for appears outside and inside the integral. So these things are called integral equations. And, uh, and uh, the power of an integral equation is the in insight it can give you once you have um, an idea of what the Green's function is. And uh, also, it's a good place to do a, a recursive approximations in that you can essentially begin and say, OK, uh, I know the wave function is this plus that, but maybe if in some sense I can think of this thing as the leading solution, I could substitute the leading solution in here and try to make an approximation. That's going to give you a nice approximation, the Born approximation. We'll see that soon. No, that should be all psi r's. Uh, I think I'm using r, so I, please. So r's and r's everywhere. Yeah, no, no difference at this moment. OK, so the next step is solving for the Green's function. We need the Green's function, otherwise we cannot make progress with this equation. So I'm going to do a simple solution of the Green's function, basically by uh, doing a couple of checks and saying that is the answer we're interested in. 
And, uh, and there are several possible Green's functions. And uh, depending on the problem you're solving, you choose the right Green's function. And we'll choose the one that is suitable for us now. This is a, something that can be done. The general solutions can be obtained by contour integration. And there are all kinds of nice methods to do this. Uh, but in fact, in this case, it's really simple. You don't need any of those complicated things. You can just pretty much write the solution. So that's what I'm going to do. So what do we need for the Green's function? So we have a Green's function that depends on r minus r prime. Okay, And uh, so it depends on a vector. So let me simplify the matter by saying, OK, since it depends on a vector, I'll just first calculate what is g of r, the Green's function of r. When the vector is r, or you could think it's when r prime is equal to 0. Whatever I find for g of r, this one is obtained by whatever I find here, putting instead r minus r prime. So g of r is enough for what we want to do. So it should have Laplacian plus k squared on g of r should be 4 uh, not 4 pi, it's delta of r. OK. So we've uh, looked at that. In fact, uh, at the beginning of this course, uh, not of this course, of the discussion of scattering, we looked at this equation. In fact, we wanted to solve it when uh, the right hand side was 0 to find solutions of the Schrodinger equation. And we found that these g's could be of the form e to the i k r plus minus i k r over r. Those were the spherical waves that solved this equation with zero potential. Those are our solutions. Uh, now, it's easy to see that um, Laplacian plus k squared on this g that has a plus or minus is equal to 0 for r different from 0. The formulas for the Laplacian that you can use for r different from 0, you can check that is true. And it's easy. You can use that formula, for example, that the Laplacian is 1 over r the second should be partial, d second dr squared r. So psi, psi, like that. That formula in one 30 seconds, you can see that that works for r different from 0. But then uh, there's also a formula that you know that Laplacian of 1 over r from electromagnetism is minus 4 pi times the delta function of r. This comes from Poisson's equation in electromagnetism. So uh, that's saying uh, Laplacian of the potential is the charge density. This is the potential for a charge. The charge is at r equals 0. It's a singularity. It's a uh, something you study. So here, if I put a minus 1 over 4 pi for g plus minus, a minus 1 over 4 pi, the Laplacian of this whole thing is 0. But when you approach 0, the Laplacian of this function this function approaches just 1 over r. As r goes to 0, this goes to 1. And uh, the Laplacian of 1 over r gives you this minus 4 pi cancels with that. And it will give you a delta function. So the delta function will arise correctly from this quantity. 
So I've argued without solving this equation that this does give you a solution of the Green's, for the Green's function. It's Laplacian plus k squared is zero away from zero, and as you approach zero, it has the right singularity to give a delta function. So this is your Green's function. As I said, many ways to derive it. If you want, uh, see Griffiths, uh, see other ways in which it can be done. Then you can also check this by doing properly the, the vector calculus. Uh, you can take a Laplacian as divergence of the gradient and calculate every step, and it's, uh, it's fun to do it as well. Um, you check that this works. So this works, and now we have to make choices. And our choices are going to be adjusted to the problem we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve a scattering problem, and psi zero represents a solution. And uh, from the way we thought of our waves, we had psi equal e to the i k z plus f of theta and phi e to the i k r over r. So it's reasonable to try to set, and we're going to find solutions by setting psi 0 to be e to the i k z. It does solve the equation Laplacian squared plus k squared equals 0. And then we're going to set the Green's function to be g plus with a plus here, because we want solutions of the type e to the i k r. We've already decided those were the solutions we need. And uh, a Green's function with a plus in there is going to generate that. So those are fine. You could have chosen another thing here, an arbitrary solution, and you could have chosen a g minus as well. And you would get a solution of the Schrodinger equation. It would not have much to do with the solution we're trying to get. So let's show that um, this gives us this kind of solution we want to get and gives us already a formula for the scattering amplitude. So let's, let's do that. For that, um, we just need to write what the Green's function is and um, approximate so it will be a first step okay so what do we have psi of r is equal to e to the i k z i'm writing up this top equation but we now write it with the right boundary conditions, which correspond to a psi zero and a particular choice of the Green's function, d cube r prime, g of r minus r prime, u of r prime, oh, those are vectors, and psi of r prime. Uh, all those are vectors except g, which is pretty in that it is spherically symmetric. Uh, this g plus minus of r just depends on the magnitude of r, which is very nice. Okay, so a couple of things that we can do here, and most everybody would do. Let's g plus of r minus r prime is equal to minus 1 over 4 pi e to the i k length of r minus r prime. That's what this is supposed to be, over length of r minus r prime. Remember I said to you that uh, whenever we had g of r, then to get the one we need, we'll just have to replace the r by r minus r prime. And here, this little r, or r without a vector, is the magnitude of this vector. So we've put the magnitude of those vectors there. 
Now, people look for approximations in here. Uh, so here is what we need to do. Imagine you are the origin here is a potential, and you have your system of coordinates. You are integrating over places where the potential exists. So the R prime that you're integrating remains inside the range of the potential. Here is zero. And then there's an R, which is where you are looking at. And there's an angle between these two. Oh, maybe I should let me make the angle a little bigger, uh, smaller, I mean, R. And uh, in general, we look always far enough. This is an exact solution, but uh, we might as well considering, consider looking at psi's that are located far from the potential. So we have uh, the idea of what should we do with these uh, terms. One thing you can do is to say that in the denominator here, r minus r prime, is good enough to set it to r in the denominator. And for the numerator, however, it's a lot more sensitive because you have a k here, and depending on whether k is uh, large or small, a small difference in r minus r prime, if you're estimating this and you make a an error comparable with the wavelength of your particle, you make a big mistake. If you're far away, you're 100 times farther than the range of the potential, here you're making a 1% error, no problem. But if you're making a 1% error in the estimate of this, that may be still comparable to the wavelength of this k. So you have to be a lot more careful in the face than you have to be on the other one. So on the face, for the number, for the face, face, we will take r minus r prime equal to r minus n r prime. Um, so what is n? n is a unit vector in this direction. And uh, indeed, uh, approximately, the, this distance here is approximately equal to the distance r minus the projection of r prime into this one. So that is your approximate distance. So here is the final formula that we're going to write today. I'm running out of time, but uh, that's what we wanted to end up with. So here is what we get. So g plus of r minus r prime has become minus 1 over 4 pi r. The denominator is r. There's an e to the i k r and an e to the minus i k n dot r prime. So that's, and the arrows are crucial here. If I don't put an arrow somewhere, uh, it probably means something. So psi of r is equal to e to the i k z plus minus 1 over 4 pi r. The integral over r prime doesn't care about this. d cube r prime e to the minus i k n dot r prime times u of r prime times psi of r prime. All that multiplied by, um, let me take the r out, e to the i k r over r. So look at what we've obtained. I just rewrote, finally, this uh, expression for the Green's function over there with the integral over r prime and the Green's function here. You have 
this quantity in brackets, this quantity in brackets here is nothing but the f of theta phi of the scattering amplitude. You have this equal to that plus e to the ikr over r. So we'll continue that next time and uh, finish up with scattering probably in the first half of the next lecture.